Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, today's webinar is in collaboration with Microsoft and Reddington. We will be discussing when Microsoft Teams meets platform. Uh, before I hand it over to Chris, I would like to brief you on our speakers. So today our speakers are Christophe Khalaf, our CEO, and uh, Julien Anid, our Power Platform Consultant. Uh, please make sure to uh, keep your microphones on mute, and if you have any questions, please time, type them into the chat box and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, Chris, uh, would you like to start? Uh? Uh, Chris, would you like to start? Sorry guys, there is a small connection issue. Uh, Chris will get back to us ASAP. Uh, sorry, sorry, I was on mute. I was talking on mute. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Chris. All right, <laughs> sorry. All right, so uh, thank you all for joining uh, our today's webinar on Power Platform. So today we will be discussing about uh, some new features, some advanced features in Power Platform, uh, the integration with Microsoft Teams, uh, the added value with SharePoint. So uh, this is today's webinar. I'm going to go over the agenda after. Uh, I will start by giving you a quick brief about our company and who we are. And then after that, we'll go over the uh, what, whatever will, was, will gonna be discussed during this uh, webinar. And then my colleague uh, Julian will take it from there and he will walk you through uh, the features and the live demo during this session. So uh, I'm gonna start by giving you a quick overview about our company. Uh, we are a Microsoft Gold partner. Uh, we are a regional partner. We cover uh, the entire Middle East and Africa regions. We've been awarded four years in a row Cloud Partner of the Year with Microsoft, and this is the only services we provide. So uh, we have dedicated uh, technical team and dedicated uh, support team only for SharePoint, Power Apps, Azure, Office 365, and all the cloud features under Microsoft. So uh, I'm going to start by walking you through the agenda of today. So uh, today's agenda is, uh, as we mentioned, it's around Power Platform. Uh, we had one webinar last month, which was the part one of this one. Today we're gonna uh, we're gonna show uh, added. We're gonna go just a quick brief about it, and then go in advanced features and advanced functionalities in Power Platform. So we're gonna start by uh, telling you about the benefits of Power Platform. What is Power Platform? Uh, the integration with Power Platform. Nowadays, a Power Platform is able to integrate with many, many third-party services, including uh, your ERP system, uh, Dynamics, uh, uh, Salesforce, any uh, solution that you have in mind. Uh, Power Platform is now becoming the key centralized self-service application for all those uh, tools. So uh, we're going to talk about the productivity. We're going to talk about Adaptive Card, which is also a, a nice uh, new recent features that you can use in Microsoft Uh, sorry, Chris, I think you uh, you were muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. OK, so I was saying that we will also uh, show a live demo about uh, SharePoint uh, site demonstration. We will also uh, show about how we automate workflows using Power Platform, how you are able to create your own workflows, your own business processes. Uh, under uh, the Power Platform, how those uh, business processes can be integrated also with third party applications, as we mentioned before, not uh, only dedicated or under Microsoft umbrella, it can be third party applications that you can use those uh, automate, uh, automation flows to uh, to collaborate with. We will, we will show also the Microsoft Lists, which is also a nice new feature that will give you some capabilities, uh, which, has, which is already there, already predefined from Power Platform that you can use 
to automate your business processes in Power Apps. We will also uh, show you the Microsoft Dataverse for Microsoft Teams. Today, uh, all the new platforms, all the new Dynamics 365, everything is based on Microsoft Dataverse. So uh, it's a nice feature to show. It's a universal, if you want, platform that is now uh, working among across all uh, the Microsoft uh, technologies. We will also show the adaptive card, uh, how you can from within Microsoft Teams, you, you are able to send not only messages, not only chats, you, are, you can also send uh, forms within Microsoft Teams and those forms can be filled and the data can be either inserted in a database or in your ERP or within SharePoint. So uh, this is about the adaptive card. We will talk about the integration with the Microsoft applications using uh, SQL, Azure Blob Storage, uh, the capabilities of uh, Power Platform, how it integrates with all the third parties. So this is, uh, we'll also have a live Q&A, of course, whenever you need, you can type your questions on the message, or if you want, you can also unmute yourself and ask the question, and we, we are here to, uh, to support you. At the end of the session, uh, of course, after the session, uh, we will be also contacting you in case someone needs more details uh, from us. We can contact you one by one, provide you a more detailed workshop for a specific topic that, that you see fit or you like during the session. We will uh, be contacting you and providing you more details. So I'm going to hand it over now to my colleague Julian, who's going to walk you through the product and jump to the live demo. Julian, to you. Thank you, Christoph. Thanks a lot. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all uh, for being here. Uh, my name is Julian Anid. Uh, I am uh, the Power Platform Consultant at Exquitec. Uh, so uh, in today's presentation, uh, uh, I will be showing you the value added services on the top of uh, the Power Platform, uh, covering uh, Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agent, uh, and uh, the SharePoint uh, product. So uh, the solutions mainly that we are offering like uh, I are based on these platforms. So, so you will see the integration of uh, how these technologies uh, work together. Like it will make it easy uh, to measure your business act on the result and automate uh, your business workflows. Uh, besides, you will see actually many examples uh, that we created on the top of uh, these technologies. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, it's not limited to what we are uh, going to show you. Uh, any form uh, that you think about uh, or you want to automate your business process. So uh, uh, you will see uh, how we will get the value from it. Uh, so uh, please, during the session, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, so I will be uh, I will be answering your questions at the end of uh, the demonstration. So starting by introducing what is Power Platform. So uh, Power Platform, uh, it is a system that can help the organizations to drive business uh, by enabling uh, the organizations uh, to drive intelligent business processes uh, via applications using Power Apps uh, to automate the business process. We use Power Automate to deliver insights and analyze the data. Uh, we use the Power BI product and uh, to create chatbots uh, using the Power Virtual Agents. And as you can see in this uh, figure, so all of these uh, products uh, are integrated with common data service, which is formally known now as, uh, as the Microsoft Dataverse. Uh, we can leverage the AI builder capabilities, uh, data connectors, communicating with uh, APIs and so on. So uh, starting by what is Power Apps. So uh, Power Apps is all about enabling people to solve their business problems. So using Power Apps, we can quickly build custom business applications uh, that connect us to uh, our business uh, data uh, stored or in various online data sources. So for example, uh, SQL, uh, Oracle, SAP HANA, ER, any ERP system. Uh, and in addition, like the applications that are built under Power Apps, okay, it will actually provide uh, and transform the manual business process uh, to automated business processes. Uh, and the Power Apps application can run on the phones, on the tablets, uh, and on the desktop version, uh, on the phones for uh, the Android and the iOS version. Now, uh, so this is a quick introduction about Power Apps. Uh, the other product that we're going to talk about is Power Automate. So Power Automate, it is a service 
uh, that will help us to create automated workflow between uh, your applications uh, and uh, it's a service, for example, to synchronize the files, to collect some data uh, for decisional approvals and many more. Uh, like, and we use Power Automate for many advanced scenarios with multiple steps, branching conditions, and many more. And the synchronization can be not just between the first applications, uh, it can be with third party uh, systems also. Uh, so that's about Power Automate. Uh, so regarding SharePoint, so uh, SharePoint, it is a cloud-based service. It is hosted by Microsoft for businesses of all the sizes. And uh, in SharePoint, we can create our intranet site, which will be uh, your collaboration tool uh, for your organization. Uh, we can have within the site news, events, uh, videos, tutorials, uh, company calendar. So we will see that. And uh, using SharePoint, we can create also document management system. We can benefit from the document management system uh, libraries. We can uh, create SharePoint forms. So, uh, so also we can share all of the document information with colleague partners and customers, either they are internal or external users. Of course, if we are allowing to share with external users. So that's about SharePoint. Uh, the next. Uh, the next product that we're going to talk about uh, is Microsoft Dataverse, uh, which is a brand new feature introduced by Microsoft. Uh, like they just changed the name. It was uh, named as Common Data Service. Uh, so Dataverse for Teams, is, it's actually it delivers a, uh, so it's a platform for Microsoft Teams. It provides uh, regional, uh, like uh, unriched data storage, relational data storage, and unrich data types. Uh, we're talking about uh, the multiple data types like text, uh, choices, uh, toggle, so on. Um, and Dataverse for Teams, like it, it enables us to easily build and deploy applications within the context of Teams. And it is integrated with, uh, we can extend any Office 65 application. Uh, we can leverage the AI builder, we can leverage uh, data flows, Power Query, if you want to get your data from your on-prem, uh, from any online data sources. And uh, it has a lot of capabilities where we can customize the forms uh, and dynamics, uh, set business rules, uh, create business processes, and so on. So, uh, and the, actually the benefits, like we will see the benefits of data first in Teams, uh, how we can build bots, flows, uh, uh, applications, and it is responsive on the mobile apps. So if I'm opening any app from Dataverse within Teams, it will be responsive on the mobile. Uh, and actually, uh, it, it covers the existing uh, group that you have uh, while creating the app. And for the security regarding Dataverse, uh, it aligns how the uh, security is handled in Teams, like with the focus on owners, members, and guests of the team group. Uh, so we will see that uh, in the demonstration. So that's about uh, Dataverse. Uh, jumping to another topic, which is Microsoft List. Uh, also, it was introduced recently. Uh, so it's very similar. So actually, it helped us to uh, track the information and organize the work. And it's simple, smart, and flexible. And uh, we can stay like on top of what matters uh, most of the team. Like we can have any form. Uh, and the back end, like for Microsoft List, uh, is SharePoint. Okay, so it's kind of uh, repackaged, uh, repackaged, yeah, let's say repackaged version of uh, SharePoint list uh, formatting and columns formatting. So we will see that uh, in the demo. Now, uh, the other slide that we're talking about, uh, the next slide will be uh, the benefits of the Power Platform. So Power Apps actually, uh, and the Power Platform generally, it encourage cross organization, the collaboration between the business. Uh, the IT, the pro development uh, was in control like for the compliance and security. Uh, and like, you know, the, the native application, either an, an iOS or Android app will cost you too much. So actually Power Apps, Power Platform will, will low, will reduce actually the cost. Um, so the Power Apps can minimize the cost by easily automating the process, enhancing repetitive tasks, uh, time consuming processes, reduce uh, errors access the organization. So uh, additionally, like running multiple application uh, consistently with the same custom data source. 
and it will reduce, of course, the, the paper processes uh, within the organization. So that's about the benefits. Now, um, for the next slide, uh, we're talking about the uh, cloud and on-premises connectivity that we can leverage in Power Platform. So uh, actually, on monthly basis, now there are around four, uh, 450 connectors available, maybe more, and mostly these connectors are increasing. And uh, so we can leverage these connectors to any of our workflows. If you want to communicate, for example, with Adobe Sign for Document Signature, which is a third party app, so we can leverage this uh, example connector in our flows. So every month, Microsoft is providing us more connectors to be leveraged in our flows. And even we can connect uh, using the on-prem ga gateway uh, to, for example, uh, create workflow based on uh, these data on-prem. We can move it to the cloud, so on, so on. And even if your API does not exist at all, uh, we can create custom connectors. So uh, also we have the, cap uh, the ability to build custom connectors, build the API, and uh, communicate uh, with the data. So that's about the cloud uh, and on-premises connectivity. Now uh, for the other slide, uh, we're going to, uh, so actually Power Apps, it's, it enables again the digital transformation, it reduces the papers, uh, it is integrated with uh, with any third part with any data source like Dynamics, like uh, extending any Office 65 application again. So uh, and the app can be run on the mobile, on the web, uh, and we can set the user interface uh, UX if, if we are building a Canvas app, of course, and uh, the logic and the uh, validation uh, for for your forms. Uh, so for the next slide. Uh, we're, we're going to, uh, uh, so actually it is a powerful tool, the Power Platform generally, uh, generally it's a powerful tool. Uh, it will enhance the employee productivity within Power Apps and uh, Office 65. Uh, and we can integrate and share the apps between the colleagues uh, and collect and manage and distribute uh, data uh, using SharePoint, uh, using Microsoft Forms, for example, uh, as an Office 65 application. Uh, Excel sheets and so on. So uh, that's about the tool productivity. Uh, adaptive cards. So adaptive cards uh, are actually an open card exchange format. Like actually, it enabled the developers to exchange the user interface content in a common and consistent way, and it can be used like across many uh, ap multiple applications. Like we can extend the adaptive cards in Outlook, uh, in Microsoft Teams, uh, in iOS, Android, so on. So later in the demo, we will see how uh, the adaptive cards works. So uh, to start with the demonstration, uh, I will be sharing uh, my screen. So uh, starting from uh, a SharePoint site uh, demonstration. So now we will see an example of an intranet site. OK, so uh, uh, this is the SharePoint. This is the root site of the organization. Uh, so we, we see we have multiple sites around here. So here I, I can see my following sites, my recent sites that I have visited. So now let's take an example of this site. So uh, we're talking, we, we will talk actually about the pages. So we will start uh, with the pages. Uh, then uh, we will see the list and the document libraries. So it's loading, yes. So now this is an example of an intranet site. OK, so this is the, the landing page of the site. And the landing page, again, as I mentioned, we can have articles uh, that can have images, uh, more details about the article, uh, image gallery that cycles through the images. So uh, for your site, uh, latest news section, actually the news section. So everything posted within the site, uh, it will be shared with the colleagues. Uh, and uh, so we can not notify the colleague uh, about a certain news. Uh, and even we can, uh, if we are adding multiple news, we can send the news uh, as a uh, newsletter for the employee and an email. Uh, we can link any social media platform for the organization like Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, so on. Uh, we have the events. So it's actually the company calendar of the, uh, of the organization. So. Uh, so uh, in the event part, actually we can create 
uh, recurrence event, if we have a public holiday that occurs yearly, we, we, are, we have the ability to do this instead of every time doing the public holiday manually. Uh, we can actually set a background image around here, provide the details, fill up the form, uh, assign the presenters, uh, choosing, the, for example, the meeting link, the category of the, of the event, and so on. And uh, once the event is saved, uh, actually uh, the employees will be allowed to, uh, to uh, add the event to their calendar, and it will be synced uh, with Outlook. So, uh, uh, and th this is how it will be displayed in a communication site. This is a SharePoint communication site. Uh, we can display the weather, the location, the time. Uh, if you have many branches and the, the employees wants to know the time between the, the regions. So uh, we can have, uh, we can also display the time. Uh, this is another layout of the events. So uh, it, ca it can be like this one and a card and it can be it's very similar this one to outlook calendar so uh, for example the past day it will show in gray uh, the current today's date it will be highlighted here and the events will be displayed on the side panel uh, so let's take an example uh, if i'm going to create a new event here you will see uh, this is this is a, a form a different form where i can provide for example i will just fill the form quickly so let's say Power Platform Conference description. So because here you see that's this rich text editor around here. So category, I can choose it's a meeting. I can assign the location. Uh, I can, for example, set the start, the end time and so on. And uh, if, if I want to attach something also, I can attach. And if I change, of course, uh, the time, uh, like let's choose another day. You will see how these information, uh, this is the SharePoint list formatting. This is recently introduced. And uh, while filling the form, I can see in a summary uh, all the details in a nice view, in a simple format. So uh, that's, that's SharePoint list formatting. It's recently uh, has been rolled out to the most of the environments. Uh, we can actually configure the layout and, uh, and uh, actually uh, we can apply it to the header, to the footer, to the body, how, how it should be designed and uh, using JSON, of course, uh, as a language to customize this form. So uh, uh, that's how uh, we can create an event. So when, once I create the event, you will see how it's reserved here. And in the side panel, it will be, it will display the event, the upcoming events. Now, uh, more additional information in the pages that we can have about the company, like images, description, uh, image slider, uh, services, assuming that you have, uh, you want to allow the users to redirect to your uh, uh, ARP system, to your official website. So uh, we have the capability to do so. So uh, if I click on this topic, I will be redirected to another page. Uh, we can have an embedded image, our data analytics and workflows using Power BI. Uh, we can extend Microsoft Forms. So uh, let's say you are doing a uh, uh, maybe customer satisfaction survey or something for the employees, and you'd like the employees to collaborate with the responses of the survey. So actually, we can uh, we can embed the Microsoft Forms surveys within a SharePoint page. So I can see the results, the average rating, the pie chart, so on. We can have a location. So uh, we can also provide uh, a, uh, a map to show a certain address. So uh, maybe it can be used for an event or a conference. Uh, so uh, this is, for example, one of our branches in Dubai. Uh, the activity is related to uh, the current user activity. So let's say I, I just modified a file right now. I checked the news. Uh, I interacted. So actually, everything will be logged within the activity of the user. And uh, it's, it's really a nice tool. Uh, it can be used for the SharePoint administrators. Maybe they want to generate some reporting uh, about the users who modified, who deleted the file, who visited this news, so on. So uh, that can be leveraged also. Uh, we have another list. So this is a SharePoint list. So we can see some columns and data. It's very similar to Excel. So if I want to communicate with any user in Teams, simply I can go ahead select the user, chat in Teams, it will redirect me uh, to the browser and I can open the application, can open Microsoft Teams from SharePoint. 
and it will take me automatically to the person that I have selected from SharePoint and I want to start uh, to communicate uh, with. So um, also we can display the first days of the users within the list, for example, uh, if they want to send them, uh, if they want to wish them a happy birthday, so they can either chat in Teams, send an email, and this is another uh, layout of displaying the birthdays of the users. And uh, we can leverage stream. So, you know, in your Office 65, you will have stream. Why not to use it? Uh, it's really a nice tool. You can create channels, do, uh, put the training, uh, and we can actually embed the training within SharePoint. So everything will be under SharePoint. Uh, and finally, the group calendar. Like uh, assuming that you have uh, a group calendar for a certain uh, group or department, it can show here the upcoming events, the past events. Uh, it is it is also synced with Outlook. I can sync my calendar around here. So uh, uh, that's about a SharePoint uh, page. Uh, now uh, you see above here in the hub navigation, I have some subsites. Those are SharePoint subsites. So these are the hub links. So for example, uh, assuming that this is the parent site, and I'm actually associating the parent with multiple subsites. So uh, let's say the user, a user is uh, belongs to company B. So he will be able to see in the hub navigation the company B, and he can go ahead and direct to the sites that he belongs. Uh, or if he don't even belongs to the company B, he will never see this particular navigation link. So let's see for example, let's see this uh, another site. So uh, this is another layout, a different site. Uh, you can see the look and feel, uh, the, the content of the site. Uh, so uh, that's how we can associate a site uh, with, uh, with, a, with a parent site. So actually this is the sub-site. Uh, and uh, uh, you can do the same for departments. So if you have departments, sales, accounting, finance, IT, so on. So uh, also you can associate the subsite with the parent site. So every user can go to the, to the department, navigate to the department that he belongs to. And recently, uh, like Microsoft has introduced, uh, introduced another navigation. So you, you can see three types of navigation. This one, the hub navigation, the current site navigation. And this is the global navigation. So the global navigation, actually, I can see my sites, the frequent, uh, the followed, the followed site. Uh, I can see the news. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, in one glance, and I can see my recent documents. All right. So uh, this is a really nice uh, tool that has been rolled out to the most of the environment. And also, uh, we have the analytic of the page. I can see the analytics of the page. Uh, by the page viewer. So actually, I can see the average uh, time spent by the, by the user on a page. Uh, I can see uh, the, the page viewers, uh, numbers of the page viewers, the traffic on the page, and so on. And it's applied to many pages. So uh, that's about uh, the landing page. Another one, which is the our team section, showing the profiles of the employees. So uh, and the most of the organization, uh, let's say I want to know a contact information about an employee. I want to see uh, the organizational chart. So everything uh, is linked to uh, your Office 65 profile and your Azure AD. Uh, so we're pulling on. Uh, so it will pull the information from there to show you all the information, the contact, uh, to send an email, start a chat within Teams. I can do it from SharePoint, and I can see uh, the organizational chart which is, for example, our CEO, Christophe. So this is Christopher's Teams. Uh, OK, so uh, for example, I can go uh, if I want to see the, the full hierarchy. So if I click, for example, on Basilis Teams, so I can see Basilis team and so on. Uh, and uh, it's really nice if you are assigning the manager of every user. It can be used. Uh, actually, we can leverage the approval workflow to be on the user uh, reporting to. So um, uh, that's why it's very important to have an organizational chart uh, within uh, the organization. Uh, now, uh, finally, let's jump to, uh, so those are about the pages, SharePoint pages. That's what we can do. We can also embed Power BI reports and uh, Power Apps applications. Now let's talk about uh, document management system. 
So uh, the, actually, the document management system, it's really nice in SharePoint. We can store documents, share it with, uh, it can be by department, it can be ex for external vendors. Uh, it depends on the requirements. Uh, the document management system within SharePoint, it has many features. Uh, so uh, this is an example of a DMS. Uh, you see this, uh, this group view. So uh, I can, for example, uh, see how, how they are grouped by year, uh, by title, for example. So uh, imagine a scenario here that uh, you're storing some projects and under this project, uh, uh, like you are, you're assigning the year of the project for a customer. Uh, and later on, if you will have many, many data, uh, let's say you want to pull uh, to, to get the data of a project on the year, for example, 2015 and 2020. So how will how I will be able to do so? So that's why it's very important to have a really nice view uh, to set metadata for a file. What I mean by metadata, it's data about data, providing additional information uh, on the file by tagging the file. Uh, so this is one of the feature in, uh, in SharePoint. In OneDrive, you will not have metadata to assign, whereas in SharePoint, you will have the ability to do so. Uh, now, what are the capabilities? Actually, we can share, copy the link of the file, manage the access. So I can uh, assign access uh, on a file, on a folder level, and on a subfolder level. Uh, so any permission can be assigned with different roles, edit, view, full control, so on. I have the ability to download now since I have the uh, full control role. So that's why I can see uh, I have the ability to perform any action, but maybe you want to assign some specific roles to the users or to the group that is using the library, just only to view the file and not to delete or not to download, so and not to print even. So that can be restricted. Uh, so we have also the feature of Power Automate, which we will see how we can uh, raise a document for an approval. Uh, I can also, we have, we have the copy and the move. Uh, let's say I want to move the, this document to another site or to OneDrive. I have the ability to do so. And finally, the version history of the file, uh, which is a very nice, it's handy tool where I can uh, restore any version of a file. Uh, I can view the version of the recent file and even I can delete the versions of the files. So now it will show us a grid uh, how we can uh, leverage these uh, feature in just a moment. So actually, let me just refresh the page. Okay, so let's get back again. Yes, and this is the version history. So now let's say I have two version of this file. So I can see when it was modified, the date and the time, who is the person that modified the file, what is the size, what is the comments, so on. And even I can restore, view, and delete. So that's about the version, uh, the versioning history. And I can even uh, check out the file. No one can modify the file until I check in the file again. Uh, the properties of the file, here we set the metadata. So here I can assign additional information to the file. It's very important. A big yes for the metadata to be used in the document management uh, system to avoid any of the limitations. Uh, so I can assign the year over here. I can change uh, and add additional information. And uh, uh, like just the disadvantage uh, is that whenever I upload the file, it will not ask me to add my metadata. So uh, there are workarounds for this scenario, uh, two different options. Uh, because whenever I upload the file, it will be automatically uploaded. And maybe the employees will be lazy to add the additional information of the file. And that will be uh, a problem uh, later. So we're talking maybe later in two years. We don't know the time. Uh, it depends how much files we are storing in the library. So uh, if, if they didn't go to the property and assign the metadata, the option is that we can as make the fields required. So I can assign the columns to be required, and it will be highlighted that, hey, this year it requires your information that should be assigned to the file. Now, what will be the other way? The other way is Power Apps. 
So Power Apps, it will allow us to set a document metadata before uploading the file to the library. But how to do so? So let's see an example here. This is a, uh, a just a very simple example, setting a document metadata before allowing the user to upload the file. So in this case, what we are doing, we are enforcing the user to use Power Apps to set the metadata. Uh, so for example, I can provide uh, a title, so Power Apps, let's say, I can assign the department. So this is just some examples, some columns, of course, that can be customized based on the, the department, based on the library, so on. I can choose a category. Once everything is filled within this form, I have the ability to upload the file. And now whenever I upload the file, I can choose any file, for example. So you will see this, uh, the progress, it's uploading the file to the library. And uh, once it's fully uploaded, I will have the ability actually to launch the file from the application itself and to see the file in the library. But here you might be asking, but I didn't set the path for the library, where this file is, uh, is being dropped. Imagine I have many subfolders. Uh, actually, in our next webinar, we will see these advanced features on how we can choose the path of the file before uploading uh, a file to a library. And uh, I can launch the last file. It will take me automatically where the file it was stored and it will open an Excel sheet actually. Now where I can see the file, if I get back to the same library and I refresh the page, so it will just take a moment, so I can see a title Power Apps and it's modified about a minute ago. So this is how I have assigned the metadata uh, from a Power Apps application. So instead of giving them access to this library, I will tell him go to Power Apps, upload your files, choose the pass, or maybe the pass will be displayed based on the, the, the permission uh, that they have. So uh, that's the capability for it. That's one of the capability of using Power Apps. And even I can synchronize the files to OneDrive, uh, automate the process and so on. Now let's take another example of a document management system, which is the document approval. Uh, so let's assume I have a library here, it's contract management. I will go ahead now. Uh, as you can see, I have subfolders. I have files uploaded on the root, which is a very wrong uh, idea. So that's why we can also stop the permission to avoid the users uploading uh, files on the root library, if we have subfolders, of course. Now let's say uh, I will just take a, an example of uploading uh, a file. So let's take this file. Now, whenever the, my file will be uploaded, what's happening in the back end is a flow will be triggered. Uh, uh, so actually, the, what is what is the uh, purpose of this flow? This flow, once it's triggered, it might be maybe from the departments, and the departments have maybe has di maybe dynamic approvals. So based on the departments, I I want to send I want the flow to send the approvals automatically, or maybe I will have static users. So that depends on the requirements. And even uh, maybe uh, instead of triggering the flow automatically whenever the file is uploaded, I, uh, maybe I can uh, uh, also have the ability to run the flow manually. I can decide whenever this file should be raised for an approval. Uh, uh, so now once I have uploaded the file, we see the status is new. Now let's see an outlook what's happening. So now in just a moment, I will receive an approval uh, within Outlook uh, about the file that was raised uh, from the document management uh, system. So now, as you can see, I have received this email. All right, this is the approval email. I can see the link of the file. I can provide the metadata within the body for the approval. And actually, the cycle of this approval is a state machine workflow. Like it provides a modeling style uh, with which we uh, can model the workflow in an in an event drive manner. So a state machine activity it contains the states and transitions that make make up the lo the logic of the state machine. Uh, so we will see the back end of this flow. Uh, before that, let's say I want to I will approve this file. I can provide my commands. So uh, commands because here for example, 
whenever I submit, now it will be raised to another approval. Uh, does the approvals uh, will be sent to uh, The Power Automate portal, all right, and Power Automate, uh, the, the Power Automate portal. So here we have, we can create our flows. It can be from the templates. It can be automated, instant, scheduled, desktop flows, which is the RPA, attended and unattended, and the business process flow. We're going to focus on these three types of flows. So uh, let's see the, the, this workflow that we triggered. So uh, let me just... Uh, so that, that is my workflow. I'm using the SharePoint connector. If I want to, to track and to see the run history of my flow, on which state uh, the flow is. So now by going to the run history of the flow, I can manage all my runs. Uh, so this is the dashboard showing the start, the duration, the status. And, and this is the back end of my flow. Now let's see how uh, this flow is running. Uh, and uh, like, and of course, it can be again, as I mentioned, sent to a, any Hotmail, Yahoo, Gmail account to interact with the approval uh, of the document. So now it's just taking a moment to load the process. And uh, just to get back until it's loaded. Uh, now I have received another uh, approval. Uh, let's say this is the legal reviewer. And let's say I, I want to restart the process. I don't want to approve because maybe I will have two level of approvals. If I approve it, it will be terminated. But maybe the requester is missing some information. And an example can be the signature or, the, or maybe something wrong within the file. So uh, actually I can uh, request more information and tell the requester you're missing the signature. Please add it. Whenever I submit, I am restarting the process and sending again uh, to the requester that he should add a signature. And in this case, uh, we will see now another email that will be received and what are the actions that can be taken from this requester. Uh, and this is the automated email now I'm receiving. So uh, just to show you also, if I get back to the... Uh, okay, so since the flow... Uh, is loaded, so I can see here that the file has been created, my flow has triggered, those are my actions. Uh, I'm putting uh, some actions in scope to handle any errors, to catch any, uh, so it's very similar to try and catch. Uh, I, I'm listing a group members, maybe I'm sending an approval for a certain group, it can be Azure AD, it can be Microsoft 365 groups, and so on. Uh, and here I have my last action, which is do until. What is actually doing this action is it's waiting for the final approval is completed. Once it's completed, my flow will be uh, uh, will be succeeded and will run successfully. So now if I get back to Outlook uh, uh, and uh, assuming that this is the requester has received back uh, an approval to take a decision to add the signature, if you remember uh, what was the comments or to withdraw the file. So he have the ability to stop the process or to resubmit it for a review. Now, if I get back to SharePoint to show you also uh, the, the, the status of uh, this form, uh, of this file, sorry. So we can see the status, it is need more information. And these are the logs of the files. So I can see that the approval started by this user, uh, the department has approved, the legal has rejected. Now let's say I want to withdraw. And I will I will stop the process and say I don't have my signature right now. And I will submit. Now I'm stopping the process. So whenever I submit my response, automatically the flow will update the status of the file, will append the logs within the approval history. It's very nice to see the logs in just one column instead of having multiple columns for the approvals and only one status. So uh, now, if I refresh the page again, and even if I get back to the flow, 
we can see that the status of my flow has run successfully. And uh, here we are using the switch action, switching between the cases uh, based on the condition. If it is equal to the department review, do something. If it's equal to legal, do something else and so on. So that's the back end of this uh, particular workflow. And this is about uh, uh, the document uh, management uh, approval. So uh, just let me refresh the page to show you the status of this file. And the master file, which is this one, for example, it has been withdrawn and and uh, the comments of the requester is saying I don't have my signature right now. So uh, that's about the document approval within the context of SharePoint. Now let's jump to uh, some advanced part. Uh, let's talk uh, about uh, SharePoint list. Uh, for example, taking an example of a travel request. So uh, let's see how uh, this process. Let's see how this process uh, works. So let's say uh, an employee wants to travel, so he should submit a travel request maybe for the HR, attach the ticket, uh, waiting for the approval decision and so on. So this is Microsoft list that we introduced in our presentation. Now, if I want to, to raise a new travel request, now I will go ahead to provide this information quickly. So let's say trip to Abi. Uh, reason for platform it's requester so I can assign myself I can assign the destination so I can choose I want to go to let's just try to get okay yes so whenever I choose the destination look what will happen now it will show me in a map the destination that I'm going to, I'm traveling to. And again, here we're talking about SharePoint list formatting. Here I'm not using Power Apps. We're using SharePoint list formatting to customize the form. Uh, and even, of course, we can use Power Apps and extend the application, but I'm showing you the capabilities. Now, I will choose the start date, just filling them quickly. Uh, I will choose the airline. I will put some price here. Hotel. I will choose the cost. OK, now, as you can see, I have filled all the information. Again, I can see them in one in a, in a preview mode before submitting the form. Those are my information. Now, uh, and here I can see the cycle. It's uh, it's uh, we have, for example, in this request, two level of approvals, the manager and the HR. So now when I save. So my request has been raised, so in the back end, a workflow will be triggered. Now, uh, again, the workflow uh, will have two level of approvals and we are actually leveraging uh, a, a HR AD group in this uh, for this uh, particular approval that have many members. And maybe uh, based on your approval, you can set that you should wait for all the responses from the approvals to proceed with the other steps. So we will see that. So in a just a moment, I will receive again an outlook. And uh, also, uh, like Microsoft has rolled out a new application in Teams, and uh, I will go ahead and show you this application, which is uh, the approval application. And now, as you can see, from within Teams, I can also take my approval decision. So this is the approval application. It will show uh, the notification received to the manager or to the approval. I can see uh, all the details, uh, the request, the link of the request for this user where he can go ahead and check uh, the title and so on. And here I can provide uh, the comments again. So uh, let's say comments here. I can take my decision. But now let's say I have approved from Teams, all right? What will happen uh, in Outlook? So if I get back to Outlook, I'm receiving two notifications, one in Teams and one on Outlook. But the approval is allowed to take one response. So will it be synchronized? Yes, and this is the proof that, uh, so this is uh, the request. I have completed this request and approved from Microsoft Teams. So the employees, since if they are collaborating on Microsoft Teams, they will have the ability uh, to take the decision from there. And uh, this is the second, for example, level of approval. 
And uh, finally, I can type my command, enjoy your vacation, and submit. Uh, now, I mentioned a security group who's receiving these notifications. If I, if, I, if I get back, for example, if I go for another user, uh, I can see that I have a pending request, and this is a different email address. Uh, so maybe you want to send reminder for this user. You have to take your approval decision. So let's say I, I already took my approval decision and this user did not do it. So uh, the flow is capable to check who, take the, who took the approval decision and who not, who does not take the, uh, took the approval decision. So uh, this is the approval reminder that can be sent to this user that, hey, you have to, uh, to approve this request. And simply now, uh, I can go ahead and take my decision. Now, if I get back to the list to see the status and all of these data, uh, let's just edit uh, the record. Now, you might be asking, uh, might the user will be able to edit the record even after if it's approved? Actually, we can break the role. Even if he, let's say he created and it's finally approved, he will not be allowed to uh, edit the records. So we can stop him from doing this. So we can break the role inheritance after the item has been fully approved or created. Uh, and Power Automate can uh, handle this scenario, for example and even, of course, Power Apps. So now let me just refresh the page to show you the status of uh, the request. So let me just open it again. So I will go to the travel request. And this is the, uh, the item that we raised. And here you can see the manager has approved. Now it's pending the HR. Now let me just manually show you how it will look like. So if I say, let's say if it's fully approved, so that's how it will, uh, this is the cycle, how it's look like. Let's say it's rejected by the HR, so it will be colored in red. So you see uh, how the coloring formatting is changing based on the approval decision. So that's about uh, a, a, a very simple form uh, on a SharePoint list. You can have any form can be uh, customized, annual leave, annual performance, so on. Now let's jump to uh, some advanced topics and starting discussing about uh, the uh, Power Virtual Agent chatbots and Microsoft Dataverse for Teams. So starting from, uh, let's take an example of a, uh, of a Power Virtual Agent chatbot. So the Power Virtual Agent uh, chatbot as we introduced in, uh, uh, in the presentation. Uh, so it, uh, Microsoft Data First for, for Teams, uh, it provided for us to create bots. Uh, and actually uh, the, box, the, the bots will help us to uh, reduce the cost by easily automating uh, the common inquiries of the human agent to deal with more like complex issues. Uh, and actually, uh, this example will be based on a customer service agent that is integrated with a Dynamics 365, uh, the customer service module. So uh, as a customer, I want to track the case status. I want to know uh, what is my case status. Is the problem solved or no? Instead of calling the agent uh, or the support team, I can simply communicate with the chatbot and he will be capable to uh, fetch my data. And let's see this example. So uh, this is on Teams. The chatbot is added to a Teams uh, as a Teams application. Uh, so now I will start the conversation with the ch chatbot by greeting and saying hi. So now whenever I send the message, so it's still sending. Just a moment. Okay, sorry for that. I just have some delay. Just give me some moment. Yeah. So sorry for that. Let me try again. Okay. 
All right, let me just try another uh, another chatbot in the meanwhile. So let's say, uh, so now actually, if, the, if it will work now, let's see. Okay, it's taking, it's taking some time to send the message. Now it's sent, great. So uh, actually, uh, I will get back to the other agent and let's get back actually to this one. So I, I said hi, he replied to me, uh, what are the surfaces that I need help with? So I can choose, I want to find the case status or I can open a ticket. Now let's say starting by finding the case status. So as a process of authentication, he's asking me about my email address. Why? Because I want to validate if this customer is an existing account in Dynamics. So I will put my email address. All right. And now what will happen? The agent will go ahead, check if the account, if my account exists. If so, he will get back to me with my email, my data, uh, phone number. He said that I don't have a phone, a mobile phone assigned. Now he's asking me about, about my case number. Let's say I don't have my case number. I will tell him no. So he is asking me how many cases I'd like to see. I'd like to see all my cases. So now what will happen? Now the chatbot will go ahead based on the user uh, that, that we based on the email address or the mobile maybe of the user, he will go ahead and check the cases. So now we will see in a just few moments how this chatbot will return for me all of these data. And that's it. So he's telling me, please find below my case details. So this that that is for example a a, uh, a first case that is still under the status in progress. From where are coming this data? Are coming from Dynamics 365 CRM uh, from the customer sor service uh, model, and we uh, model, and we will see uh, where are these cases uh, that exist. Now the second case, I can see that my problem has been solved. Now, uh, so that's how, for example, now I have two cases. So um, let's say I have another question. I will say yes. Now, let's say I have now my case number. Let's go get the case number from Dynamics. So I will go to Dynamics. So this is uh, Dynamics 65 uh, for customer service. So uh, these are the, uh, navig in the navigation pane. I can see the accounts, contacts, the cases. So let's say I want to know about this case. I want additional details. I want my activities. I want to follow up on this case. So let's say the status is still in progress for this case. Now I will go ahead and get the, uh, the uh, case number. Now, of course, the customer will not have access to, to the Dynamics CRM. So where he is getting this case number? Actually, whenever uh, an email is sent maybe to uh, a support email address, we're just parsing the information and creating a, a case automatically. So Power Automate will do the job for us. And after that, once the case is created, the flow will return to the customer by sending the details of the case, including the case number. This is how the customer will have the case number of the case. Now, if I get back to the agent, I will say, yes, now I do have the case number. So what is my case number? That's my case number. So now while, while providing the case number, we see that in a different, uh, in a table is, return, is returned for me, the, the title of my case, the service that I have an issue on, and all of the other's details. And who is the owner of my case? So who, who is the agent assigned for this service? So also we can apply some routing rule based on the service uh, to certain agents. So uh, now also if I checked in Dynamics, so we can see this is the service, uh, the status is resolved, uh, the service is Power Platform, the, this is the title, so I can return any information that I need since we already, uh, we are integrating with uh, the data. Now, he's asking me if I'd like to know the last case activity. Let's say yes, I would like to know. So once I uh, responded yes, the flow again the agent will go ahead check what was the last activity details of course we can have a nice table format around here so uh, for example this is my last activity of the case so if i had with a customer a phone call 
or maybe an appointment. So uh, everything will be stored under the case activity. Uh, if I'm doing some research uh, or uh, checking some knowledge articles to resolve the case. So uh, everything, uh, maybe he's filling a survey. Uh, I want to track the, sur uh, the activity of a survey. Any type of a task activity, uh, any type, sorry, of an activity uh, we can leverage and uh, to be returned in, in our agent. Now, uh, where I can see this uh, activity, uh, so we see the subject is test, for example, this is the date of the case, the description. So if I head back to dynamics, I can see the same. So that's my case and those in the timeline, I can find my, uh, I can find my activities and those are my activities. This is the last one. Finally, he's asking me if I want to follow up on the case. So in this way, what we're doing, actually the flow will go ahead uh, and the agent will send an email to the owner of the case that he's assigned. So uh, now assuming that I'm the owner, so uh, the agent is replying that we uh, thank you for requesting a follow up. This is my case number and the agent will be in contact with me shortly. Now, if I get back to Outlook, we see that an automated email received case follow up request. And this email is received to the agent that is assigned. And here I can see all the details of the case in one glance in a very simple table for the agent. So the agent simply he can click on the link to see more additional information. So if I uh, get back, uh, if I click on this link or paste the link, I will be redirected automatically to the case in CRM. So uh, this is what this is uh, a very small, a very simple example on what we are capable to do with agents. How we are, uh, it can be integrated not just only with Dynamics. Again, any third-party application, uh, Oracle, uh, SQL, your on-prem, any any kind of a data source, it can be integrated with the agent to provide uh, this very nice uh, customer uh, uh, agent. Now, uh, jumping to another example, which is the power inventory management. What is the purpose of this chatbot? Uh, and just not to, for, uh, to forget to mention that even from the customer service agent, I have the ability to create my case. Uh, just let me show you uh, how we can do this. Uh, let's say, uh, sorry, let's restart the process. Okay, let's say create ticket. Okay, so now I, I just uh, add, a, add a message to create a ticket. This is my trigger phrase. So uh, maybe it can be open, doesn't matter the phrase. So the flow, uh, the, the agent is smart enough to, uh, to understand what the, the natural language of the user. So he's requiring me more information to provide the, sub, uh, the subject to identify the case. So let's say uh, this is, so MS data verb. Or teams. So let's say this is my subject. What is the, the, the service? I can choose Power Platform. Uh, describe the issue, description here. Now what will happen? Actually the flow, uh, actually the agent will go ahead and uh, create my case in Dynamics CRM. And he's providing me my case number. He's saying your ticket number is this one. It has been created and our support team will take action and contact you shortly. So now if I get back to Outlook, the agent uh, has received an email that a new case has been created under this service. So he is the, the person that is assigned to work on this, first, uh, on this uh, service. So the routing rule is very important for the case. And uh, those are the details. And if I get back to uh, Dynamics, to see this case, now we see how uh, uh, we see the case that what was created. And if you remember, this that was the title, MS Dataverse for Teams. And it is in progress, and that's the date and the time that it was created. So uh, that's the capabilities. Uh, th those are like the capabilities of this customer agent chatbot. Now let's take another example of the power inventory management. 
Uh, this chatbot can be used for retail. So assuming that uh, you want to find uh, more information uh, and the stock about a certain product, uh, maybe it can be a jacket, a shoes, uh, maybe it can be re uh, regarding a food product. So it doesn't matter. Uh, so we will see in this. Have the reference number of the item. Let's take the uh, no example. I will say no. So he's asking me what is the item type. I will say uh, so. Uh, this is based on a uh, uh, on cl uh, clauses. So uh, is asking me what is the item type. Let's say jacket. So I want to know. I want the jackets and which color. Let's say red. What which size I, I want? I want the medium size. So he's checking now in stock if I have the jacket of color red of size M. So now the chatbot, what will do, will return for me uh, the items that was found in the stock. The images of a jacket that exist, the size, the color, the reference number, okay, and the branch. Where does this item exist? It is in this branch. What are the quantities? 10. So um, uh, what is the back end from where I'm getting these kind of data? Again, it can be uh, any kind of a data source. It doesn't matter the data source. Uh, in this example, I'm using SharePoint all right, as a data source. It can be your own SQL database and so on. Uh, so you see how it's smart enough and really fast to get uh, to get me all the information. Now let's say I have another question. Uh, uh, and taking an example of. Uh, again, I don't have a reference number. Now I will make the uh, I will make some uh, the bot to fail to find my item. So let's see what will happen. Let's say I want jacket. Uh, the color I will say uh, red. And I will put a size that does not exist. What will happen now? So now. The chatbot. Uh, actually return for me the message. I think there is no size for that, but let me just again. So no, I would say. Uh, let's say hooded jacket. I will just assign. I will put some. OK, it seems actually it's taking the information of the other. Uh, OK, anyway, uh, uh, I can actually make the, 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 the bot to fail and uh, I can request an item. And uh, while requesting an item, I can actually choose the branch and put the quantity. Uh, so let's say now I have the reference number. Let's take an example of I have the reference number. Let me just put a wrong number to see to show you what will happen. Now it's asking me it's possible that the reference number does not exist. Do you want to try again or request a new item? So let's say I want to request. All right, something is happening. All right, let's say try again. So. So let's again say that I have the reference number. I will put the number. Actually, he will return for me. OK, something inspected is happening. I will not investigate in the meantime, but the idea that also I can request the item. I can find the item based on the reference number and. Uh, and any uh, any kind of metadata for an item, it can be re retrieved by the chatbots. So those are two examples on chatbots. Now, uh, taking another example, uh, let's see uh, from within Teams. I will go ahead now to a certain uh, team's channel and I will send the message and based on a selected message, I want to trigger a workflow. Uh, maybe it can be for an approval. Maybe it can be to store some items to assign a to do task. Let's see uh, now an example uh, of this scenario. Let's say now I want to 
a customer is requested is requesting show me your services plan now i have sent a message based on that message i would like to trigger a flow and to prepare for this customer the services my services plan so now based on a selected message in teams i have the ability to trigger a flow and fill a form now we will leverage to do which is the office 65 application uh, i will assign a subject all right let's say i will just fill this form quickly uh, uh due date let's say tomorrow start date today importance selecting the category and i want to remind myself tomorrow at for example 9:30 a.m and i will submit this is the adaptive card form okay so based on that form that i have launched from a, a teams message now uh, what what will happen actually if i uh, i will go ahead i will go to uh, to do all right this is the application to do i will refresh the page and now in my tasks and in just a moment uh, we will see that the services plan has, has been created and the due is tomorrow and those are the categories so based on a selected message in teams uh, uh, that's that's what i did so uh, now i actually have completed this one uh, let me just so uh, this is this is the one that we created if i want to see additional information it's uh, it will remind me tomorrow at 9 30. this is by assigning all the information from this adaptive card so i'm extending the to-do application so uh, another another option uh, and another different way uh, let's say i want to attach something here and maybe check for duplicates in a document library in sharepoint or maybe i want to send this attachment for a vendor whenever i'm attaching a file to a certain channel under a Teams group. How I can do so? So uh, now let's say uh, I will go ahead, just drag and drop a file. So let's take the example of this one. I will go to Teams and drop the file around here. I will replace. So now the file will be uploaded. And let's see what will happen. Is this now based on an attachment? I want to send the attachment that it was uploaded to Teams to a vendor, maybe, or to check if this item exists in a document library. Many, many ideas we can leverage and use. Uh, so now I will go ahead, get the attachment from a Teams message. All right. So now we see that the flow has triggered successfully. Now, how, how I can see the back end of this flow? Now, uh, if I go to uh, my flows, that, that is my flow, get attachments from a team's message. I will just refresh my flow runs. And what we will see, the status, the uh, run history, uh, so the A flow has then triggered 20 seconds ago and succeeded. And this is the back end of my flow. So, now I can, based on a selected Teams message, I'm getting the message, uh, uh, doing some iteration because I might attach many files. So uh, it will do the iteration, uh, check in, in, uh, in SharePoint if this file exists or not. If so, send it an email. So uh, that's just only an example, but uh, imagine a scenario what we can do uh, based on a selected Teams message uh, from Microsoft Teams. If I get back to my Outlook uh, email, I can see that I have received an email with the file that I have attached from the channel. So look how this flow, uh, how was this, uh, the capability of the flow, uh, how did it this job? So uh, imagine you are sending an invoice or any PDF file or any document type, so the flow uh, will be capable uh, to read the content and send the email. So that's about uh, how we can uh, use adaptive cards and trigger a workflow based on a uh, Teams message and an adaptive card. Uh, 
Now, uh, let's see. And uh, now we're going to talk about Microsoft Dataverse that it was introduced uh, uh, recently uh, in October. So let's see uh, what is Microsoft Dataverse. So actually, uh, you can see that I have the Power Apps application. It's pinned in the navigation on the left navigation. So now I can create a Power Apps application from within the context of Teams. So uh, now we see that those are my recent. This is the grid showing my recent apps. I can start now, create new app. Uh, I can choose from templates provided by Microsoft. Uh, if I go to the build, now here it will show me my Teams group. All right. And based on uh, this Teams group, uh, I can have multiple applications. So as an example for this one, uh, so inside this team group, which is demo, uh, I have those two. I have actually one application and the type of this one is the table. That means I'm using the table of, uh, so I'm using this table and the Power Platform application as an example. Now, if I want to see all the app, let me show you what we are capable to do. So actually we can create Power Apps application. Either it can be phone or tablet. I can create flows. Automated, instant, or scheduled. It can be recurrence. I can create chatbots. Uh, environment variable can be used if I'm switching between environments within Teams. The table, that means the, these are the dataverse entities, uh, formerly known as tables. So what we mean by entities is tables. So uh, uh, here, here I can filter by my apps, by my chatbots, if I have any, uh, by the tables. Uh, so I have, for example, the account table. Uh, uh, all right, so here you might be asking how I can assign a permission. Who can edit? Who can delete? Who can? So actually we can assign permission based on the table and based on the app. And actually how, how the security is working, uh, like the permission is working within Dataverse. If we have a group of the HR department, all right, and uh, the HR um, uh, like director, let's say, She's the owner of this group, and it has uh, it have like uh, the uh, other colleagues of the HRs. So uh, only the HR director is the owner, so she will have the capability to uh, have the full uh, access. Whereas the other should not have, for example, uh, a full access to, for example, maybe uh, delete a record for an employee. So how I can assign the permission from Dataverse? It's, it's a really nice uh, user interface where I can uh, choose uh, who will have access. So here I have three types, the guest, the member, and the owner. Of course, the owner will, will always have the full access. For the members, I can decide. I want the member group to have only the collaborate access. That means create, read, but not to update or delete, and so on. So we have five different permission roles here. So uh, that's how I can manage the table permission. So uh, another another example, uh, if I want to share the app with colleagues or no. So let's say I have this app here. I have the option to share with colleagues. Now, if I want to share it with colleagues, I can assign a, a security group. Now, since I'm in the context of a Teams group, which is demo, so it's taking all the members of this group. And even I can add uh, another group. And I can disable, let's say I have three apps uh, for this uh, group. I don't want to let them to access this app. So I can uh, choose, uh, disable the toggle, save. They will never have access to the app. So uh, that's a quick overview of what we are, uh, what we can leverage uh, in Microsoft Dataverse for Teams. Uh, and again, it respect the uh, protocol model, like the security model of uh, the current group, where I can manage the team. And uh, here are here I can see how how they are uh, assigned, like members and guests. So, for example, they will have read only. The owners will always have full controls. So it respects this this security model. Okay. So uh, uh, that's about uh, dataverse. Now. Uh, let's take an example uh, of, a, uh, of a editable table created under Microsoft Dataverse. So let's say you want to create a grid, all right? Maybe it can be for task to assign, to be assigned for a users. 
uh, you want it to be uh, within the context of Teams. It might be, for example, a Power Apps application, I mean Canvas application uh, created not in Teams, that also we have the ability to embed uh, within Microsoft Teams, and it can be created within the context of a group. So now uh, this is a very, uh, very simple example. Uh, so uh, I can add the row, like assign the task name, uh, the description. So for example, uh, task one description goes here. So I will fill just this editable grid quickly uh, to show you, for example, what we are capable to do. So you see the different, the different data, uh, the different data types, like uh, drop down, multi choices, uh, calendar, for example, and even we have the ability to uh, connect to the Office 65 user profiles uh, within uh, our tenant. So, uh, for example, if we're using SQL, we will not have the ability uh, to directly like have the type of a person or group profile. So we will see just only the, uh, we can have, of course, the email addresses. So uh, for uh, whereas in Dataverse, they are providing these, uh, this type of a column. And another example, like the difference between Dataverse and SQL, just one example is that in Dataverse, we have a data type uh, for the attachments, whereas in SQL, we don't have this capability. So uh, we are, and in SQL, we might store the link of the file, whereas in Dataverse, the file will be stored uh, with the link and the content and so on. So now let's say uh, I will assign this, uh, I will assign myself. So uh, you can see this uh, very nice UX. So it's saying that I have some changes so I can save uh, my data. And actually where this data uh, will be saved, it's under Dataverse table, okay? Uh, and even I can view only, I will not be allowed to delete or do any modification. I can edit, I can add and so on. So that was a very small example of what we are uh, capable to do with Dataverse for Teams. Now, uh, uh, finally, to show you also uh, another example, uh, it is a, a new feature, actually, it was introduced recently, um, creating a Teams application, a Teams meeting, sorry, from a Power Apps application. So uh, imagine you have a, uh, like, a, web, a web page, a web form created on .NET, you want to extend uh, maybe you have a form for appointments and you want to use Teams uh, to create the meeting and generate the link for you. So uh, we can leverage this one in a flow, but even with Power Apps. So uh, this is a very small example that I can create a Teams meeting by pushing a button with some predefined data. So whenever I create this Teams meeting and I head back to uh, the Outlook, I just expand my calendar. You will see that I have created now a meeting, Teams meeting from Power Apps. So uh, we can leverage this feature. Another way, it's from inputs. Like uh, from inputs, that means uh, it's it's really the same how you fill the Teams meeting details with an Outlook. Uh, but I'm showing you also the capability that also we can have the inputs within Power Apps. So I can enter the subject. I will just fill this form, pick the date, for example, let's say 12 p.m. I, will, I can set the duration of the meeting, the importance, the attendees, I can assign who are the attendees, for example. I can put the email addresses, I can assign multiple users, uh, the time zone, on which time zone it's based, I can send reminders, uh, I can uh, show the time as busy, free, tentative, so on. Uh, finally, I will create the Teams meeting. So actually, uh, once I fill all of this information and uh, uh, it will be successfully created and it will generate for me the link. So I'm not taking uh, care of generating the link of the meeting. And now if I uh, get back to, uh, to my Outlook calendar, you will see that uh, it was created uh, from Power Apps, and even if I open to check the details, this is a test from Power Apps based on the dates. Any data can be provided around here with the location, the time zone, so on. So uh, 
uh, that's how uh, we are capable to uh, extend uh, the uh, Teams meeting application. Finally, the last part uh, to show you today, uh, assuming that you want to synchronize a SharePoint uh, employees list with an Excel sheet as a data source. Of course, it can be maybe your ERP system, your SQL, but let's take an example of this. Uh, because some of the organizations like will have drivers, uh, will have uh, employees that cannot interact uh, with the apps or the forms, uh, and uh, maybe does not have email addresses. Uh, so uh, that, that, that will be the benefit of synchronizing the Excel sheet, how it's going. So uh, let's say I have a very simple grid uh, showing the business unit and some information about the employees. So uh, uh, let's say uh, some employees have email addresses, some of them does not have email addresses. How I can do the kind of synchronization uh, between a SharePoint list and extend the SharePoint list to be used for many forms that I would like to create in the future. Uh, so we will take an example. Uh, uh, actually, it can be a recurrence flow. On a monthly basis, if you have many turnovers within the organization, uh, I, I would uh, let's, let's assume the HR is modifying the sheet, so, uh, and the flow should take care of the process to synchronize the list without again doing a manual job and replicating the job again and over again. So how it's done? Well, actually, uh, we will see that in a, just a moment. So uh, now I, I, we have here in the email addresses, this user exists and this user exists and this user exists, but this user does not exist. All right, uh, I just input a invalid email address. And for this, this user, uh, but it, do, it does not have a direct manager to report to. So how I can generate this kind of report and do the synchronization? Let's see it together. So here in SharePoint, I have uh, a list, so uh, which is this one, it's a very small example. I have two, two records, okay, myself and another user, and the status is active. So, uh, so the, they are working currently in the organization. Uh, now, let's say I would like to change the department for this user, all right, to be maybe another uh, title. So let's go ahead here, change, for example, from finance to uh, development. Uh, and maybe for the other user, let's say accounting. And by the way, the, this user does not, does not exist, which is the second row here, which is CRM, does not exist. And uh, let me just double check if it exists or not. does not exist. So we will see now, let's assume that an employee has joined and I want to sync this list uh, from, the, from within the sheet. Now let's trigger this workflow and see what will happen. So I will go to uh, the workflow, which is, let me just open the flow. So I will go to the portal. And uh, just a moment, I will switch my environment where my flow exists. So these are many, uh, environments. We have testing, production environment, and so on. And this is my flow. Sync a SharePoint from Excel. Now, what is the flow job? Actually, uh, what we'll do now is Flow. I will go ahead and run this flow manually. All right. Again, the flow can be triggered triggered in different manners. It can be recurrence. It can be manually. It can be whenever an item is created, is modified, deleted, so on. Now, just for testing, let's see it together. I will just run this flow. And let's see what will happen to a SharePoint list from within uh, between like uh, versus the Excel sheet that it is here. Now I have triggered this flow manually. We see the status is running. Now let's see the SharePoint list around here. You will notice that a new row has been created. If you remember, uh, there was two rows here. So uh, there were two rows. So now I have three rows. And the third row is the CRM user, which is a new employee joiner. So it is automatically uh, doing the synchronization and 
adding this user to this list. Uh, and now, uh, if you remember, also I have changed the department uh, to development. So this is myself, this is my department, this is the development. So every field changed in the sheet, it will be reflected in the list, all right? Assuming that now this user has left the organization and he's inactive anymore, and I don't want the record to, to, to exist in my SharePoint list, how I can do so? Before that, let me show you just an example. Uh, sorry. Uh, let me show you that we are generating a report. So this is the automated email saying that this flow has generated and found the below issues. The first issue is that this email address, if you remember from the sheet, is not found. It does not exist in my organization. So I, I have to fix it. The second, the second part is the user's manager. Like that means for this manager, uh, this user does not have a manager assigned. So the IT should go ahead and assign for the user a manager because this is connected to and synced between AD and the, the list. Now, let's say uh, CRM is a lever. I will change the status and let's see what will happen. I will trigger the flow back again and uh, uh, now it's saving, it is saved to make sure, and I will run this flow. Now we see that two minutes ago it has succeeded, and if we check the back end of the flow, so here I am, uh, I will be able to troubleshoot all my actions. So uh, that is my flow. Uh, using variables, using an Excel sheet, uh, uh, using uh, some additional actions to, to filter my data, to see how many employees do I have in this sheet, to check if it is deleted or not, uh, like if, it, if he's a lever actually or not, and so on. So uh, if I get back to SharePoint and I refresh now the page, we will see that CRM, we have two records, and CRM record has been deleted because he's a lever. So, so uh, uh, that's it. Uh, I hope uh, really you found it useful and it was informative for you. Uh, please, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them out and I will be happy uh, to answer your questions. So I just wanted to let you know that we're going to be having another webinar in May. It's going to be about Microsoft security. Uh, we'll give you more details uh, once uh, in May. So uh, we'll send you the details and the invitation for it. I'd like to thank you again for joining this webinar. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns, please drop us an email and we'll get back to you. And uh, a member of our sales team will also be reaching out to you to uh, check your requirements and your needs on Power Platform. OK, thanks again for joining this webinar. We look forward to having you soon again uh, next month.